Hello everyone, I hope you are all having a great day and are staying safe and healthy. I'm really excited to be doing this type of video on this channel. If you are not new here, you know I've made unboxing videos or photo card collection updates, so I hope you enjoy this new type of content that I'm making. I'm also thinking of possibly making this a series where I even talk about the history of other groups, so if you have any ideas or suggestions, uh, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll take them into consideration. If you're new here and you do like the content, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on the notifications so that you know when I upload a new video. So I've always wanted to do a type of video where I look into the history of a group and go over things that went down. And even before I even came up with this idea, I was really interested in Pristin and Hanapia because they were groups that I was a really big fan of, especially wanting to see how Hanapia would turn out after hearing of Pristin's disbandment and kind of looking into what the other members would be doing in the future. But before continuing and possibly spoiling some things, I just wanted to leave a few disclaimers. So since Hinapia was not really active for a long time, there isn't a lot of information that I could find. So if there are some inaccuracies, which there probably might be, please let me know in the comments politely please and I can leave a pinned comment with any corrections or updates I also ask that you please be respectful in the comment section as well uh, towards anybody who's commenting this video is by no means intended to inspire hate towards any party involved any person any fan anything like that it's just to look into the history of a k-pop group and what went down during their time of activity and with all of that out of the way let's get on with the video now, before we start talking about Hanapia, I feel it is very important to talk about the predecessor group, Pristin. If you do not know, Pristin was a 10-member girl group under Pletus Entertainment that gained a bunch of popularity before debut, with some of the members participating in the first season of Produce 101, with two of them, Nayoung and Kyokyung, debuting in the temporary group IOI. The members of Pristin were Nayoung, Roa, Yuha, Unu, Rena, Kyokyung, Yehana, Sungyun, Shiyun, and Kyla. There was a lot of hype surrounding the group before the debut, with the eight other members performing in weekly concerts while Nayoung and Kyokyung were promoting with IOI. They also released a pre debut digital single titled We, written by four of the members. <laughs> After IOI disbanded in January 2017, Nayoung and Kyokyung returned to debut with Pristin in March of 2017. They debuted with the mini album Hi Pristin, with the music video for their title track Weeru releasing at the same time. <laughs> It seemed like the pre-debut activities and the hype from IOI benefited the group. The album peaked at number 4 in the Gaon album charts, selling over 43,000 copies in Korea and over 1,000 in Japan. It also peaked at number 10 in the Billboard World's album charts. WeeWoo peaked at number 49 in the Gaon digital chart and number 11 in the Billboard World digital songs chart. Pristin was the group to look out for, gaining popularity as time went on. In August of that year, they released their second mini-album, School Out, with the title track, We Like. While it didn't do well as WeeWoo, it sold over 27,000 copies in Korea and under 1,000 in Japan, peaking at number 4 in the Gaon album chart and number 5 in the Billboard World album chart. We Like peaked at number 94 in the Gaon digital chart. Pristin ended the year off really strong, winning several awards at end of year award shows. They won the R Rookie Award at the Asia Artist Award, Best New Female Artist at the Emna Asian Music Awards or MAMA, New Artist Award at the Seoul Music Awards, and Global Rookie Top 5 at the V Live Awards. They also received several nominations at the Gaon Chart Music Awards, Golden Disc Awards, and the Melon Music Awards. Nine months after the release of School Out, Pletus announced on May 17th that a Pristin subunit would be debuting, with three of the members of Hanapia being a part of this unit. Pristin V, featuring members Nayoung, Roa, Unu, Rana, and Kyokyung, debuted on May 28th with the single album Like a V, along with the release of the music video for their title track Get It. Well, 
The album sold over 18,000 copies and peaked at number 5 in the Gaon album chart. It never entered the Gaon Digital Song chart, but it did peak at number 66 in the Gaon Digital Download chart. After promotions for Get It ended, things on Priston's end went silent. There was no news of a comeback or other promotional activities. With the silence on Politis's end continuing for months, fans decided to speak up and let their frustrations be heard. In December of 2018, fans went to the Pletus building and posted a bunch of notes demanding a comeback or even just one activity or update from the members. Pletus did not react to the protest, ignoring the notes and even taking them down by the next day. Finally, on May 24th, 2019, fans received a statement from Pletus. However, it wasn't exactly what they wanted to hear. The company confirmed that Nayang, Roa, Yuha, Unu, Rena, Xian, and Kaila terminated their contracts while Kyokyung, Yehana, and Sunyun would stay in the company. Their statement further explains how it went down. First, we sincerely thank fans who care for and love Priston. We are delivering the official statement regarding the disbandment of Priston and the termination of contracts for members. We would first like to apologize to fans who have always been so supportive for delivering this unfortunate news. Because this is a decision that must be made carefully, a lot of time was given in thinking about this matter. At the end of discussions, we decided to respect the wishes of the Priston members and came to the conclusion of disbandment and contract termination. As for the Priston members who will be leaving our agency, we would like to express our deep thanks to them and sincerely support them in their new paths even though their official contracts have ended. The news came as a shock to fans who didn't even see this coming after hearing nothing. Side note, personally, in my opinion, I was waiting for some news from Priston since I thought they had a lot of potential. I mean, they were winning several awards at end of year award shows and gaining so much recognition from their debut. I wasn't shocked at the fact that they were disbanding, I was more so shocked at the fact that it happened so early in their career. I thought they would have had maybe a release or two a year until their contracts ran up and just disbanded quietly after a few years, but it just popped up out of nowhere, and apparently fans weren't the only ones who were shocked at the announcement of disbandment. But we'll get into that in a little bit. There are several stories that have been discussed about the whereabouts of the other members after the disbandment announcement, but that is another discussion and we'll just highlight just a couple. For example, just about a month after the announcement of disbandment, Na Young signed with Sublime Artist Entertainment and debuted as an actor in a 2020 drama. Xian also appeared in a web drama Trap that aired in the summer of 2020 while also acting in an indie film earlier in that year. Not much was heard about the other members of the group though. That is, until October 2019. On October 21st, 2019, a Twitter account for a company known as Al Silbit Entertainment tweeted a link to an article announcing that they will be debuting their first group, a five-member girl group with four of the former Priston members and a new member. The announcement stated that their debut would be in November. Two days later, the account announces that the social media accounts and fan cafe for their group Hinapia have opened. Fans were excited to hear the news and it started spreading across social media. On the 25th, the Hanapia account shared their release plan. Starting on the 28th, there would be two concept photo releases a day, starting with Roa, now known as Minkyung, Unu, Rena, now known as Yebin, and Yuha, now known as Kyungwon, with the hidden member concept photo releasing on the 30th, a group photo releasing on the 31st, MV teaser on November 1st, single and MV release on the 3rd, and finally, debut showcase on the 4th. However, the Twitter account didn't really follow through with that release plan. Just the next day, after possible speculation of who the hidden member would be and waiting for the concept photo release on the 30th, the company tweeted an announcement that the order of concept photo releases was going to change. Rather than releasing the hidden member concept photo last, the hidden member was going to be revealed first and then Min Kyung would be released last. With this, hidden member Bada was the first to have their concept photo released, followed by Unu, Yebin, Kyungwon, and Minkyung. Then, while fans were excitedly waiting for November 3rd to hear the debut and watch the MV, show champion on NBC's October 30th broadcast revealed, Hinapia's debut stage? Apparently, in between releasing concept photos, they announced on the 28th that Hinapia would perform on the October 30th broadcast of Show Champion. 
Then, the company tweeted out that due to a scheduling problem, the MV teaser that was set to release on November 1st would actually be put up a day earlier, releasing on October 31st. If you go look at the video, a couple of comments already showed fans' reactions to how things were being released. Comments such as, Quick, everyone, pretend like we didn't hear the song on Show Champion, and don't know why I'm excited like I never heard this song before. Even with these issues, fans were still excited and eagerly awaiting for the debut and music video to be released. Then, November 3rd came. Hanapia finally debuted with the digital single New Start, with the MV for their title track, Drip, releasing at the same time. Now, if you look at the Hanapia Twitter account and find the tweet of the music video, it'll look normal, right? However, if you look at the replies, they show an issue that actually went on regarding the video. So, when the first music video dropped, people who were eagerly waiting rushed to see the video and it actually reached a couple hundred thousand views. You can't tell from the tweet, but the link they posted is actually a re-upload with edits. The replies to the tweet include some users asking why the video was uploaded again and asking for the company to get rid of fake YouTube accounts. Now personally, when I was reading this, I got so confused because I didn't know anything about fake YouTube accounts and was trying to figure out what was going on. Well, according to a Reddit thread, there were multiple YouTube channels that pretended to be the official Hinapia channel in order to divert the views on the original music video away from them, therefore lowering the view count after 24 hours. As for the reason for the re-upload, in the original video, there is a scene where Min Kyung was eating a slice of toast with butter on a bed and wiping some of the butter off her mouth, and that was considered too suggestive, so it was taken down and re-uploaded. There is a video on YouTube showing the difference between the original and the re-upload, and I will leave a link to it in the description of the video. Another issue addressed in the replies of the tweet for the music video is the delay of releasing the song on streaming services. At the time of the MV release, the song was still not released on Spotify or Apple Music. People began wondering if the song would ever become available to stream, but it eventually did. At this point, Hinapia fans that were former highs, the fandom name for Priston, were still curious as to the timeline of events that led to the disbandment of Priston. While some questions were answered at Hinapia's debut showcase, Priston's disbandment came up during the interview portion of the showcase. Min Kyung explained, after Priston disbanded, my heart ached, but I was fortunate enough to be with my fellow members who shared a common goal. However, Yebin dropped something that shocked fans. Well, if not all, definitely me at least. She said, Without knowing about the disbandment of Priston in advance, we had been preparing for our next album. So this means that Pletus literally told them about disbandment while they were making a new album. More was revealed in a group interview with Joy News 24 later that month while they were still promoting. Min Kyung revealed that all of the Priston members talked with Pletus about their future in the industry. Some of them wanted to focus on their studies while others who wanted to pursue solo activities. Gyeongwon, Eunwoo, Min Kyung, and Yebin were the four members who wanted to continue as idols. The members also said that Pletus thought that disbandment was the best option for them, and with the discussions, they were able to decide what they wanted to do quickly after disbanding. The interview also explained the meaning of different things about Hinapia. The name Hinapia stands for High New Amazing Utopia. The digital single's title, New Start, was meant to symbolize the four members' new start as a group free from Pletus and Priston. They also talked about the reason for adding Bada to the group. According to Anu, Bada was necessary to the group since the members were lacking a fresh personality. The members also revealed that their opportunity to re-debut in Hinapia was urgent and desperate. Yebin commented, We were getting older and the seasons were passing by. Time was going to waste. When I debuted with Hinapia, I thought, let's just do it, and I only had motivational thoughts. Anu added, Idols age, and I was worried because there's an age limit for idols. As drip promotions continued, Hinapia also gained some popularity for their covers. On Power of K-Soul Live, which based on their Twitter account seems to be a Japanese show filmed in Seoul where artists perform, I don't think they win like in other music shows, it's just them performing. But in this show, Hinapia covered Red Velvet's Bad Boy and Peekaboo as well as Blackpink's Playing With Fire. 
After Drip Promotions ended, Hinapia held their first fan meeting where they performed Drip, their covers, and played games and interacted with fans. Now, just to do a little sidetrack thing here, during my research, I wasn't able to find a lot about what happened after the fan meeting, except for them performing at some events, which was mainly their cover songs. However, one announcement that surprised some fans was on February 3rd, 2020, when Korean news sites announced that Hinapia would make their first comeback in March. Unfortunately, Minkyung later announced that with situations obviously that arose that year, the comeback had to be postponed. The next significant thing I found was from the next day, February 4th, where Minkyung appeared on the show Video Star. Now, before I continue with this part, I do want to leave a warning for those who may be sensitive to certain topics, because there is a slight mention of a sensitive topic that may be intense for some people. I will leave a timestamp on the screen if you would like to skip this and continue with the rest of the story of Hinapia. In this episode of Video Star, Minkyun spoke about her experiences and struggles that she went through after the group disbanded. Here are some of what she had to say. So, <laughs> 그러다 보니까 그, 어 내가 이러다가는 진짜 큰 일에 나겠다 그런 생각이 들었던 것 같아요. 언니도 그래. <웃음> 물론 다 그렇겠지만 아직도 경험이 많이 없으니까 약한 나이라서 그런 생각을 좀더잘 빨리 했던 것 같아. 그래서 그렇게 하다 보니까 저라는 사람이랑 제가 난 이런 모습으로 보여야 해이 사이에 괴리가 생기더라고요. The episode also revealed that Minkyung herself was the one who found Also Beat Entertainment, or now OSR Entertainment, and contacted them about debuting Hinapia. Sandra Park, a member of the popular group 21, was also in the cast of the episode and was able to relate to Minkyung and also shared her struggles after her group disbanded. She recalls living through a dark two to three year period, trying to figure out what to do and how to continue on. She ends by saying she was able to find happiness in life and can have fun when holding events or solo concerts. Minkyung was also sharing how re-debuting made her feel happy that she was able to go back on stage doing what she loved. On February 12th, 2020, a Star News article was released where OSR Entertainment CEO Han Kyung Jin, who apparently doesn't have a lot of info online, at least that I can find, was interviewed about Hanapia. He talked about how he met them and what his impression of the members were. He also did give some information about how discussions went on in the company. When asked about the members' potential concerns about their charms during debut, he says, The bottom line is that they're good friends, so don't discard Priston's image and color. So I gave them the autonomy so that members could create and emphasize their own color while practicing by themselves. He continues to reveal what the members discussed before debut. All of them were desperate to be on stage again. Since the members were already prepared, it was easy for me to make my own decision. I promise to help them get the stage they want. I'll work harder. He praised the group for entering the Billboard World Digitals chart and talked about a new album. He explains, it will be an extension of the debut album and the color doesn't change much, but I want to bring it more luxurious and popular. As the impact gets stronger, I can say that you can expect more. It will also draw the process of overcoming the worries and problems that each of this generation feels. Expressing the feelings with this new album comes with the story of hope and dreams. The bit of the interview that I found ends with the CEO saying that the members were resting in January and are working hard for their comeback. After this interview, there wasn't much going on with Hanapia. Now, with the delay in the comeback on their Twitter accounts, it was mostly members often posting pictures and videos to interact with fans, as well as do occasional performances or covers and V-lives. 
like for example one they did for White Day where they made the trendy Talgona coffee. The group made slight appearances on different shows such as Idol Radio and other YouTube original shows where they could have the chance to show off their charms and interact with fans. The constant updates continued for months until the last photo that was posted on their Twitter account, a photo of Kyungwon on June 2nd, 2020. Now, I do want to go back and talk a little bit more about OSR Entertainment. From the information I could find online, it seems like the company was formed to debut Hanapia, a brand new company that started from nothing. One thing that seems to be a given when it comes to groups from smaller, lesser known companies, it's busking. If you don't know what busking is, it's when idol groups, dance cover groups, or basically any type of performer perform out in public in areas where there's a lot of foot traffic. This takes place mainly in Hongdae, which is now a location that is specifically associated with busking. Smaller groups usually go busking before debut to get their name out to the public and gain fans before their official debut. Groups such as ACE, GWSN, CLC, G-Idol, and many others participated in busking before debut. I mean, Priston's pre-debut weekly concerts, in my opinion, could also be considered busking because it got their name out there and built the hype up for WeWoo. However, right after Hinapia's debut, the pandemic hit and caused a massive shutdown. Busking became obsolete and Hongdae was not getting packed like it used to. In Hinapia's case, this meant that their chances to perform were basically taken from them. OSR was not able to find opportunities to make money or schedule any activities for the group. These financial issues could possibly be one of the main reasons why, on August 21st, 2020, only nine months after debut, OSR announced that Hinapia had officially disbanded and all members' contracts had been terminated. Their official statement reads, First, we wish to apologize for bringing unfortunate news to the fans who have always loved and waited for good news from Hinapia. We wish to speak to you of Hinapia's disbandment and the termination of all members' contracts. Our agency has spoken at great lengths with the members over a substantial period of time, and we all came to the decision to disband the group and terminate our exclusive contracts with all five members. The members of Hinapia are set to be active in a variety of fields in the future, and we hope you will support their new beginnings as well. Some of the members also released statements on their individual Instagram accounts. I will leave their individual statements on the screen so you can pause the video and read them if you would like. One final thing, there's something I found that was pretty interesting that related to Hinapia and OSR. I do want to preface by saying that what I'm going to show you is an answer to a question on the website Quora. And when I tried to look up from sources to back this statement up, it was mostly from Twitter threads that have since been deleted. So I can't confirm the complete accuracy of this you know, statement, but it is something that I did find very interesting that I did want to keep in this video. So, in response to a question, which small K-pop company has the potential to be big, one user commented that OSR Entertainment, quote, politely asked Tanapia to terminate their contract since the company couldn't manage them longer due to financial issues caused by the pandemic. OSR Entertainment promoted Hanapia well on music show and during promotions, gave members outfits that weren't too revealing despite their concept. The girls had fun as a group and enjoyed their time at OSR as the girls are still on good terms with the company and show no hatred towards the company. And that concludes the history of Hanapia. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this new type of video on my channel. If you're new here, you can check out my other types of videos such as album unboxings and updates to my photo card collections. Again, if you have any recommendations of other groups or artists you would want to see covered on this channel, please do let me know in the comment section down below and I'll take them into consideration. On my channel, I usually end my videos with a song recommendation. So for this video, I would like to recommend All Mine by GWSN. They're one of my favorite girl groups at the moment and this song is one of my favorite b-sides from them. The theme of the album is like a carnival or a festival that the members are attending and you can tell in the song that there are small details that relate back to that theme, which is pretty common in their discography. So I always recommend them to friends because it's always such an interesting journey listening to their albums. So I do hope you enjoy that song. Thank you all so much again, and I hope you all stay safe and healthy and see you in the next video.